A League of Nations mandate was a legal status for certain territories transferred from the control of one country to another following World War I, or the legal instruments that contained the internationally agreed upon terms for administering the territory on behalf of the League of Nations. These were of the nature of both a treaty and a constitution, which contained minority rights clauses that provided for the rights of petition and adjudication by the international court. The mandate system was established under Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations, entered into on the 28th of June 1919. With the dissolution of the League of Nations after World War II, it was stipulated at the Yalta Conference that the remaining mandates should be placed under the trusteeship of the United Nations, subject to future discussions and formal agreements. Most of the remaining mandates of the League of Nations with the exception of Southwest Africa thus eventually became United Nations Trust Territories. Two governing principles formed the core of the mandate system, being non-annexation of the territory and its administration as a sacred trust of civilization to develop the territory for the benefit of its native people. Basis The mandate system was established by Article 22 of the Covenant of the League of Nations, drafted by the victors of World War I. The article referred to territories which after the war were no longer ruled by their previous sovereign, but their peoples were not considered able to stand by themselves under the strenuous conditions of the modern world. The article called for such peoples' tutelage to be entrusted to advanced nations who by reason of their resources, their experience or their geographical position can best undertake this responsibility." <inaudible> Generalities All of the territories subject to League of Nations mandates were previously controlled by states defeated in World War I, principally Imperial Germany and the Ottoman Empire. The mandates were fundamentally different from the protectorates in that the mandatory power undertook obligations to the inhabitants of the territory and to the League of Nations. The process of establishing the mandates consisted of two phases. The formal removal of sovereignty of the state previously controlling the territory. The transfer of mandatory powers to individual states among the Allied powers. Treaties. The divestiture of Germany's overseas colonies, along with three territories disentangled from its European homeland area the Free City of Danzig, Memel Territory, and Saar, was accomplished in the Treaty of Versailles 1919, with the territories being allotted among the Allies on 7 May of that year. Ottoman territorial claims were first addressed in the Treaty of Sevres 1920 and finalized in the Treaty of Lausanne 1923. The Turkish territories were allotted among the Allied powers at the San Remo Conference in 1920. <inaudible> <inaudible> Hidden agendas and objections Peace treaties have played an important role in the formation of the modern law of nations. Many rules that govern the relations between states have been introduced and codified in the terms of peace treaties. The first 26 articles of the Treaty of Versailles contained the Covenant of the League of Nations. It contained the international machinery for the enforcement of the terms of the treaty. Article 22 established a system of mandates to administer former colonies and territories. <laughs> Legitimacy of the allocations Article 22 was written two months before the signing of the peace treaty, before it was known what communities, peoples, or territories were related to sub-paragraphs 4, 5, and 6. The treaty was signed, and the peace conference had been adjourned, before a formal decision was made. The mandates were arrangements guaranteed by, or arising out of the general treaty which stipulated that mandates were to be exercised on behalf of the League. The treaty contained no provision for the mandates to be allocated on the basis of decisions taken by four members of the League acting in the name of the so-called principal allied and associated powers. The decisions taken at the conferences of the Council of Four were not made on the basis of consultation or League unanimity as stipulated by the Covenant. As a result, the actions of the conferees were viewed by some as having no legitimacy. In testimony before the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, a former U.S. State Department official who had been a member of the American Commission at Paris testified that the United Kingdom and France had simply gone ahead and arranged the world to suit themselves. 
He pointed out that the League of Nations could do nothing to alter their arrangements, since the League could only act by unanimous consent of its members, including the UK and France. United States Secretary of State Robert Lansing was a member of the American Commission to negotiate peace at Paris in 1919. He explained that the system of mandates was a device created by the great powers to conceal their division of the spoils of war under the color of international law. If the former German and Ottoman territories had been ceded to the victorious powers directly, their economic value would have been credited to offset the Allies' claims for war reparations. Article 243 of the treaty instructed the Reparations Commission that non-mandate areas of the Saar and Alsace-Lorraine were to be reckoned as credits to Germany in respect of its reparation obligations. Topic: <laughs> Legitimacy of the provisions. The U.S. failed to ratify the Treaty of Versailles which included the Covenant of the League of Nations so the U.S. never joined the League. The U.S. government subsequently entered into individual treaties to secure legal rights for its citizens, to protect property rights and businesses' interests in the mandates, and to preclude the mandatory administration from altering the terms of the mandates without prior U.S. approval. The official journal of the League of Nations, dated June 1922, contained a statement by Lord Balfour UK in which he explained that the League's authority was strictly limited. The article related that the Mandates were not the creation of the League, and they could not in substance be altered by the League. The League's duties were confined to seeing that the specific and detailed terms of the mandates were in accordance with the decisions taken by the Allied and associated powers, and that in carrying out these mandates the mandatory powers should be under the supervision—not under the control—of the League. Types of mandates The League of Nations decided the exact level of control by the mandatory power over each mandate on an individual basis. However, in every case the mandatory power was forbidden to construct fortifications or raise an army within the territory of the mandate, and was required to present an annual report on the territory to the Permanent Mandates Commission of the League of Nations. The mandates were divided into three distinct groups based upon the level of development each population had achieved at that time. Topic. Class A mandates The first group, or Class A mandates, were territories formerly controlled by the Ottoman Empire that were deemed to have reached a stage of development where their existence as independent nations can be provisionally recognized subject to the rendering of administrative advice and assistance by a mandatory until such time as they are able to stand alone. The wishes of these communities must be a principal consideration in the selection of the mandatory. The Class A mandates were Palestine United Kingdom, 29 September 1923 – 15 May 1948 in April 1921, the Emirate of Transjordan provisionally became an autonomous area under the United Kingdom, and it became the independent Hashemite Kingdom of Transjordan later Jordan on 17 June 1946 upon joint ratification of the Treaty of London of 1946. A United Nations partition plan for Palestine for peacefully dividing the remainder of the mandate failed. The mandate terminated at midnight between 14 May and 15 May 1948. On the evening of 14 May, the chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine had declared the establishment of the State of Israel. Following the war, 75% of the area west of the Jordan River was controlled by the new State of Israel. Other parts, until 1967, formed the west bank of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan and the Egyptian-occupied Gaza Strip. Syria France, the 29th of September 1923 to the 24th of October 1945, this mandate included Lebanon. Hatay province, a former Ottoman Alexandretta Sanjak, broke away from the mandate on 2 September 1938 to become a separate French protectorate, which lasted until Hatay province was ceded to the new Republic of Turkey on 29 June 1939. When Syria and Lebanon formally joined the United Nations on 24 October 1945 as independent states, the French mandate was by that action terminated. Mesopotamia United Kingdom, not enacted and replaced by the Anglo-Iraqi Treaty of October 1922. Iraq attained independence from the United Kingdom on 3 October 1932. 
Class B mandates The second group of mandates, or Class B mandates, were all former Schutzgebiet German territories in West and Central Africa which were deemed to require a greater level of control by the mandatory power. The mandatory must be responsible for the administration of the territory under conditions which will guarantee freedom of conscience and religion. The mandatory power was forbidden to construct military or naval bases within the mandates. The Class B mandates were Rwanda Arundi, Belgium, from the 20th of July 1922 to the 13th of December 1946. Formerly two separate German protectorates, they were joined as a single mandate on the 20th of July 1922. From the 1st of March 1926 to the 30th of June 1960, Rwanda Arundi was in administrative union with the neighboring colony of Belgian Congo. After 13 December 1946, it became a United Nations Trust territory, remaining under Belgian administration until the separate nations of Rwanda and Burundi gained independence on 1 July 1962. Tanganyika United Kingdom, from 20 July 1922 to of December 1946. It became a United Nations Trust territory on the 11th of December 1946 and was granted internal self-rule on the 1st of May 1961. On the 9th of December 1961, it became independent while retaining the British monarch as nominal head of state, transforming into a republic on the same day the next year. On the 26th of April 1964, Tanganyika merged with the neighboring island of Zanzibar to become the modern nation of Tanzania. Cameroon was split on the 20th of July 1922 into British Cameroons under a resident and French Cameroon under a commissioner until the 27th of August 1940 then under a governor on the 13th of December 1946 transformed into United Nations Trust Territories again a British successively under senior district officers officiating as resident a special resident and commissioners and a French trust under a hot commissaire Togoland was split into British Togoland under an administrator, a post filled by the colonial governor of the British Gold Coast present Ghana except 30 September 1920 – 11 October 1923 – Francis Walter Fillon Jackson and French Togoland under a commissioner United Kingdom and France, 20 July 1922 – Separate mandates, transformed on 13 December 1946 into United Nations Trust Territories, French Togoland under a commissioner till 30 August August 1956, then under a High Commissioner as Autonomous Republic of Togo and British Togoland as before, on 13 December 1956 it ceased to exist as it became part of Ghana. Topic. Class C mandates The Class C mandates, including South West Africa and certain of the South Pacific Islands, were considered to be best administered under the laws of the mandatory as integral portions of its territory." The Class C mandates were former German possessions Former German New Guinea became the territory of New Guinea Australia, United Kingdom from 17 December 1920 under an at first military administrator, after wartime Japanese, U.S. military commands from 8 December 1946 under UN mandate as North East New Guinea under Australia, as administrative unit, until it became part of present Papua New Guinea at independence in 1975. Nauru, formerly part of German New Guinea, Australia in effective control, formally together with United Kingdom and New Zealand, from the 17th of December 1920, the 1st of November 1947, made into a United Nations Trust territory, same three powers, until it's the 31st of January 1968, independence as a republic, all that time under an administrator. Former German Samoa, New Zealand, United Kingdom, the 17th of December 1920, a League of Nations mandate, renamed Western Samoa, as opposed to American Samoa, from the 25th of January 1947, a United Nations Trust territory until it's the 1st of January 1962, independence. South Pacific mandate, Japan. South West Africa, South Africa, United Kingdom. From 1 October 1922, Walvis Bay's administration still merely having a magistrate until its 16 March 1931 municipal status, hence a mayor was also assigned to the mandate. Topic. Rules of establishment 
According to the Council of the League of Nations, meeting of August 1920, "...draft mandates adopted by the Allied and Associated Powers would not be definitive until they had been considered and approved by the League." The legal title held by the mandatory power must be a double one, one conferred by the principal powers and the other conferred by the League of Nations." Three steps were required to establish a mandate under international law. 1. The principal allied and associated powers confer a mandate on one of their number or on a third power. 2. The principal powers officially notify the Council of the League of Nations that a certain power has been appointed mandatory for such a certain defined territory. And 3. The Council of the League of Nations takes official cognizance of the appointment of the mandatory power and informs the latter that it the Council considers it as invested with the mandate, and at the same time notifies it of the terms of the mandate, after ascertaining whether they are in conformance with the provision provisions of the Covenant, the U.S. State Department Digest of International Law says that the terms of the Treaty of Lausanne provided for the application of the principles of state succession to the A mandates. The Treaty of Versailles 1920 provisionally recognized the former Ottoman communities as independent nations. It also required Germany to recognize the disposition of the former Ottoman territories and to recognize the new states laid down within their boundaries. The terms of the Treaty of Lausanne 1923 required the newly created states that acquired the territory detached from the Ottoman Empire to pay annuities on the Ottoman public debt and to assume responsibility for the administration of concessions that had been granted by the Ottomans. The treaty also let the states acquire, without payment, all the property and possessions of the Ottoman Empire situated within their territory. The treaty provided that the League of Nations was responsible for establishing an arbitral court to resolve disputes that might arise and stipulated that its decisions were final. A disagreement regarding the legal status and the portion of the annuities to be paid by the A mandates was settled when an arbitrator ruled that some of the mandates contained more than one state. The difficulty arises here how one is to regard the Asiatic countries under the British and French mandates. Iraq is a kingdom in regard to which Great Britain has undertaken responsibilities equivalent to those of a mandatory power. Under the British mandate, Palestine and Transjordan have each an entirely separate organization. We are, therefore, in the presence of three states sufficiently separate to be considered as distinct parties. France has received a single mandate from the Council of the League of Nations, but in the countries subject to that mandate, one can distinguish two distinct states, Syria and the Lebanon, each state possessing its own constitution and a nationality clearly different from the other. <laughs> Later history After the United Nations was founded in 1945 and the League of Nations was disbanded, all but one of the mandated territories that remained under the control of the mandatory power became United Nations Trust Territories, a roughly equivalent status. In each case, the colonial power that held the mandate on each territory became the administering power of the trusteeship, except that Japan, which had been defeated in World War II, lost its mandate over the South Pacific Islands, which became a strategic trust territory", known as the Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands under United States administration. The sole exception to the transformation of League of Nations mandates into UN trusteeships was that South Africa refused to place Southwest Africa under trusteeship. Instead, South Africa proposed that it be allowed to annex Southwest Africa, a proposal rejected by the United Nations General Assembly. The International Court of Justice held that South Africa continued to have international obligations under the mandate for Southwest Africa. The territory finally attained independence in 1990 as Namibia, after a long guerrilla war of independence against the apartheid regime. Nearly all the former League of Nations mandates had become sovereign states by 1990, including all of the former United Nations Trust Territories with the exception of a few successor entities of the gradually dismembered Trust Territory of the Pacific Islands formerly Japan's South Pacific Trust Mandate. These exceptions include the Northern Mariana Islands which is a commonwealth in political union with the United States with the status of unincorporated organized territory. The Northern Mariana Islands does elect its own governor to serve as territorial head of government, but it remains a U.S. territory with its head of state being the President of the United States and federal funds to the Commonwealth administered by the Office of Insular Affairs of the United States Department of the Interior. 
Remnant Micronesia and the Marshall Islands, the heirs of the last territories of the Trust, attained final independence on the 22nd of December 1990. The UN Security Council ratified termination of trusteeship, effectively dissolving trusteeship status on the 10th of July 1987. The Republic of Palau, split off from the Federated States of Micronesia, became the last to get its independence effectively on 1 October 1994. Sources and references Wright, Quincy Mandates under the League of Nations. Greenwood Press. Nela Matz, Civilization and the Mandate System under the League of Nations as Origin of Trusteeship, in, Avon Bigdandy and R. Wolfram, eds, Max Planck Yearbook of United Nations Law, Vol. 9, 2005, p. 47-95. Pugh, Jeffrey, Whose Brother's Keeper? International Trusteeship and the Search for Peace in the Palestinian Territories, International Studies Perspectives 13, No. 4 November 2012, 321-343. Tamburini, Francesco I mandati della società della nazioni, in Africana, Revista di Studi Extraeuropei, n. 15 2009, pp. 99-122. Angie, Antony Colonialism and the Birth of International Institutions, Sovereignty, Economy, and the Mandate System of the League of Nations 34 3, New York University Journal of International Law and Politics 513 2002, World Statesman, links to each present nation topic References topic Further reading Angie, Antony. Colonialism and the Birth of International Institutions, Sovereignty, Economy, and the Mandate System of the League of Nations, NYUJ International L. and Pohl. 34 2001, 513. Bruce, Scott David, Woodrow Wilson's Colonial Emissary, Edward M. House and the Origins of the Mandate System, 1917-1919 University of Nebraska Press, 2013. Callahan, Michael D. Mandates and Empire, The League of Nations and Africa, 1914-1931 Brighton, Sussex Academic Press, 1999 Haas, Ernst B. The Reconciliation of Conflicting Colonial Policy Aims, Acceptance of the League of Nations Mandate System, International Organization 1952-6 No. 4 pp. 521-536. Hall, H. Duncan. Mandates, Dependencies and Trusteeship 1948, Online Margolith, Aaron M. The International Mandates 1930, Online Mats, Nela. Civilization and the Mandate System under the League of Nations as Origin of Trusteeship, Max Planck Yearbook of United Nations Law 2005-9 No. 1 pp. 47-95, Online Peterson, Susan. The Guardians, The League of Nations and the Crisis of Empire, New York, Oxford University Press, 2015 Sluglet, Peter. An Improvement on Colonialism? The uh, Mandates and Their Legacy in the Middle East, International Affairs 2014-90 No. 2 pp. 413-427. On the Former Arab Provinces of the Ottoman Empire Right, Quincy. Mandates under the League of Nations 1930, 730 pp. Comprehensive coverage. 